Welcome back to thewindowdog.com. Today we're taking a look at the outside fusion window. This is the absolute least expensive replacement window that outside produces. Today we're going to decide if it's worth the money, if it's a great way to save a couple of bucks, or if it's a complete waste of time. Get ready for fun! So before we get started, we'll give you the backstory. The outside fusion is a sort of a reworked version of the old outside Excalibur window that was popular for years and years. Now, when they came out with the newer outside mezzo window, which we'll be reviewing shortly, they still wanted to offer the old Excalibur window, it was their old warhorse, but they knew if they offered a very popular model and they had their new model, a lot of folks wouldn't pick the new model, they would still buy the old model. It makes for different, difficult uh, manufacturing forecasting because it's hard to tell how many people are gonna buy what, how much capacity do you have to have available to sell which one, it was difficult. So in order to tackle that problem, they stripped a couple of features out of the old outside Excalibur window. They gave it a new name, they called it a fusion window, and they made it a little bit cheaper. Because of that, now this is more positioned as the low end product in the outside line, and the mezzo is more of a, a middle of the road type product. So as far as cheap windows go, it's not a bad product. One of the main advantages to it is you get a lot of glass area. In fact, we used it as an example in our Will I Lose Glass Area videos because it has such a slim frame. You can see the measurement from the outside of the frame to the edge of the glass here is two and a half inches. That's about as narrow as you'll find with any window out there that's also capable of meeting the Energy Star standards. And for a lot of folks, that's a big deal. You get a lot of sunlight in your house with these windows. So that's a plus. Uh, looking around the product, as we tilt it in, you'll see it, it does what most new windows do these days. Uh, the sashes tilt in for easy cleaning. You'll see there's double weather stripping, two pieces on there. On the side, there's also two pieces at the center where there's a big bulb seal here and there's a, a fin seal there. And there's also two pieces on the top where there's one on the outside there and one up there. So relatively well insulated. The air infiltration ratings on these, depending on the size, are about 0 0.12, 0 0.15. It varies a little bit. Um, that's not remarkable, but it's still better than a lot of other products out there uh, that cost significantly more. So ratings-wise, it's, it's not a bad performer. You'll see as we open this up, you've got a sill slope to the outside. We'll show you that a little more when we get to the outside. Uh, but while we're in here, we'll show you these night latches that pop up, give you about four inches of opening, uh, prevents your baby from going outside, prevents your dog from jumping through the window, uh, keeps the burglar on the outside. Kind of a nice product. Uh, most new windows will have that these days, um, but there you go. Uh, one other thing you'll notice on here that kind of bugs me, and you've probably seen in some of our other videos, but we get a side view. You see there's no balance cover here. This is one of the parts that outside stripped out. The old Excalibur window did have a balance cover. The new Fusion window does not. Uh, what that means is you're going to get dust and dirt and stuff built up in here over time. You go to clean it off, you can't really get in there, you're going to be banging your knuckles around, you're going to be causing streaks because you can't quite get your little rag into all the corners. Uh, it's just kind of a cheap thing. Did they need to take that out? It couldn't have cost much. I bet balance covers cost about a nickel per window. But they took it out just so they can say, oh, if you want to get the nicer stuff, move up to our next higher window, which is the mezzo window. So they wanted to remove some things. A drawback also from a service standpoint is there used to be a notch up here, for those of you who are familiar with how to replace a balance mechanism. If the balance were to ever fail, there was a notch up here. You could undo the screw that's in the jam about here. It would slide up to the top. It would come out of that notch. The notch was filled with a vinyl piece they called a sash top which prevented the sash from going all the way to the top. Now that was a fine design because it made for very easy service. If folks have a problem with their balance, you can change it out inside of five minutes. No big deal, it's done. Without that notch, it becomes a little bit more like surgery. You need to heat up the window with a heat gun. You get a tool called a jam spreader that spreads that jam open in order to get the balance out. Then you put the new balance in. You hope everything goes back to the shape it's supposed to. It's okay, you almost never need to replace those things, so maybe it's not a huge deal, but it was a whole lot easier before, and they've taken that part out of this window. Again, they're just trying to justify why it's cheaper. Does it actually affect the manufacturing cost? No, not to any measurable degree, but they need some reason to justify why the mezzo window costs more, in which case they need to make this window uh, look cheaper. So they've accomplished that. Spinning this around to the outside, We'll notice a couple of things. Uh, one is that slim frame has a nice beveled exterior, so when it's installed in the home, it looks like it's built in there. Uh, it doesn't look like something that was stuck on after the fact, which you can get with, say, an outside Sheffield or an Ultramax window that has a big, thick frame. So that's the reason we've always liked these frames, and I continue to like these. Uh, one drawback you'll notice is the screen. Outside is known for nice screens. They typically have a very heavy-duty screen. This screen is a complete piece of junk. Let me take this out of here, and I'll show you. Let me get to the other side and we'll pull this out if it'll cooperate. There we go. This screen is a complete piece of garbage. This is a roll-formed 
uh, screen frame, which means it started off as a flat piece of aluminum and it gets pushed through a series of rollers that slowly bend it over into the shape. The downside is it is really flimsy. I mean, I could bend this without even trying. Uh, if you get it, you're trying to pull these things out, you're going to bend it, you're going to ruin it. If you tried to take it out and you drop it from the second floor, it's going to be a goner. It's just a piece of junk. So I would probably not buy this window just because of that. And we haven't even gotten to all the drawbacks. You'll see the spline is also on the outside. The spline is the rubber part that holds the screen into the frame. And we've, we've shot a video on rescreening screens. It's very easy to do. But when you have this spline sitting out there in the summer for five or ten summers getting baked in the sun, it's going to get dried out. It's going to crack. It's going to fail. You're going to get a wiggly screen. You're going to have to waste a Sunday rescreening your screens. All of the other L-side double-hung windows, and sliders for that matter, come with screens that you put the spline to the inside, which protects it from the sun. This window does not. And finally, you've got external corner keys on the screen. These are white uh, vinyl pieces that combine to uh, join the uh, parts of the screen frame. Again, it's just another component that'll fail, but this thing is just flimsy as all get out. It's an absolute piece of garbage. You wonder from a manufacturing cost how much cheaper is a cheap screen versus a night screen? I would bet it's less than a dollar, but they use the cheap screen so they can say, well, this is our cheaper window. If you want the nicer thing, you can buy the nicer model. Well, that's the strategy. We'll see we've got a slope sill on the outside, so it's sloped, and so any rainwater comes in will just run out. That's a pretty standard feature nowadays. This is a slightly older design in that it still uses the weep holes, and you can see the little hole down here. Now, what that is is it's any water that gets into the frame through these tracks on the sides is designed to drain through the frame and out the bottom. Um, that's fine. Uh, we, we have seen some service calls over the years where these weep holes get full of junk, you know, spider webs and leaves and twigs and dirt, and then they don't drain properly. You get a good hard driving rain, this frame will fill up with water. If it can't drain to the outside, it'll leak to the inside. You'll call us up, you'll say, hey, my window's leaking. We'll go out there to take a look at what's going on, and that's what we'll see. I've even seen a little tree growing out of these once. You just stick a pipe cleaner in there or a stick or something, try to get all the junk out. And then typically I'll pour a cup of water down into the frame to make sure it's working. You'll see the water just stream out of the weep hole, then you know you're all set, problem solved. Uh, even better solution is a fully welded sill that most new windows have, where it's completely sealed on the inside so there's no way for water to get in. If water can't get in, it doesn't need to drain out, and you never have a problem in the first place. So the newer windows are doing that these days. These old um, outside fusion designs do not do that. Uh, lastly on the outside, you'll notice the uh, glazing bead, which is the vinyl part that holds the glass into the sash has a nice mitered cut and it's a very slim piece. This product was known for being a, a slim frame and it continues that with the slim glazing bead and the mitered corner is a nice touch to give it a, a wood look or a nice finished look on the outside. That does lead us to one of the drawbacks of this window is that it's not available in triple pane glass. Because it's such a thin sash, it can't support the weight of the triple pane and it doesn't have enough depth in the sash. A triple pane sash is thicker, typically one inch or an inch and an eighth where this is a 7 8 inch glass pack and there's no room for a bigger piece. So you could not put triple pane in here, but it's a low-end product. They're not going for triple pane. So hopefully that gives you the rundown of this product. It's cheap. It's probably only, I don't know, 10 or $15 cheaper than the outside mezzo window on a wholesale cost basis like what we would pay. So if you're looking, if you're comparing the two, it is most certainly worth 10 bucks, 15, 20 bucks to get a nicer product. If your contractor is trying to charge you $100 more to get the nicer product, you probably need to find a better contractor because the cost is, is really not that great. So we hope you found this information helpful. Remember, thewindowdog.com is the absolute greatest source for replacement window information on the entire internet. If you have a question or a comment or suggestion, a video idea, drop us a line on there. We'll do our best to get back with you. Remember, that's thewindowdog.com. Have a great day.